How would you like a garden that is virtually free from harmful insects? It's possible. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I discuss everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. Today, let's talk about garden insect control using integrated pest management. There are gardeners who think the best way to get a pest-free garden is just to kill all of the pests. Well, integrated pest management takes a different approach. It's an effective, environmentally sensitive approach to pest management. It looks at your garden as an entire system. And rather than throw a bunch of chemicals at it, it strives to create an environment where you work a little bit and then reach a point where nature effectively takes care of itself. Integrated Pest Management, or IPM, focuses on long-term prevention of pests by managing the ecosystem. And it's all based on scientific research. And you can find a lot of information from universities about the IPM methods. When you consider IPM in your garden, it helps to think in terms of good bugs and bad bugs. The good bugs are the ones like ladybugs. We know what they look like. We know that they have benefits. There's a whole bunch of bad bugs, the caterpillars that might be chewing up our leaves. Well, the first step in IPM is actually identifying the pest. We have to know if it's a pest at all. Just because you see a bug doesn't mean it's a bad bug. It could very well be beneficial. So, there is some work involved. You have to take the time to see the bug, identify the bug, and then determine if it's good or bad. There are a number of resources to help you identify what kind of insect it is. If you do a simple search of yellow and black insect on my pumpkin plant, no doubt you're going to get a number of pictures that will lead you to more information about the insects. That's a great way to start. And once you've identified the insect, the next step is to actually monitor it. You may not even need to take any action at all. A single bad bug on your plant doesn't mean you need to start pulling out the poison. It doesn't mean you need to take any drastic action. It just means that a single insect landed on your plant start monitoring those plants. Go out every day, go out a couple times a day, and see if the population is increasing. You have to determine whether there's a problem or not before you take any additional action. And as you're identifying the pests and monitoring the pests, it's important to set action thresholds. These are the points where you will take some action. If I look down and see an ant, on this spinach as I am right now, well, I determined that there's really no action to be taken. The threshold is really quite low. But if I look at this spinach and I see that it's covered with aphids or a lot of caterpillars that are eating the leaves, well, now I can set what threshold is appropriate for me to take action. And in the beginning, it might be as simple as just pulling off some of the insects. It may increase to the level where I do need to apply some pesticides, but there's a lot of room in between. You've got to figure out at what point do you need to take action. A few chewed leaves, no big deal. Devastated plants, that crosses the threshold. And in determining at what point to take action, it's helpful to think in terms of whether it's a nuisance, like just a few chewed leaves, or is it a threat? Is the plant and the harvest being threatened if you allow the pest and that pest problem to continue? Here's a small turnip plant that's being chewed up by some kind of insect. But the plant is still growing, the leaves are still green, and I'm not planning on harvesting these leaves. I'll be harvesting the root underneath. So my threshold is pretty high for this. I can allow some more damage and not be too concerned because the part of the plant that I'll be harvesting is not being affected right now. 
I'll still do what I can to identify the insect that's making this damage. But for now, I don't have to worry about an action threshold with this plant. The next step in this IPM process is to begin to think about the pest control. And the first part of control is preventing the pests. With one or two pests, it's not a problem. So if you can prevent a large population from growing, it may be no problem at all. So start thinking in terms of what you can do to remove the conditions that are attracting that pest in the first place. A lot of insect pests are going to start attacking young or sick plants. It's easiest for them. One of the things that you can do to prevent a problem in the first place is to consider your watering. Overwatering and underwatering are very common. And when you do that, it weakens the plant. And those are the kind of plants that are often going to be attacked first. So just your general gardening practices can make a big difference, starting with how you water. A lot of gardeners think that fertilizer makes for stronger plants. But if you fertilize, particularly with a lot of nitrogen at the wrong time, it's going to generate a lot of new young growth. In these grow bags, I'll be fertilizing more than some of my other garden beds. And I have to be careful about that because if I've got plants growing and I put too much fertilizer in, the plants are gonna start growing very rapidly. And that new growth is actually very susceptible to pests moving in and then starting to damage the plant. And try to think beyond the plant that's being affected right now when it comes to prevention. Some of the most effective prevention measures are very long term. Once you start identifying these insects, you can learn more about their life cycle. And you may learn that they lay their eggs at a particular time of year, maybe in a bunch of dried leaves on the ground. Well, if you have the pest this year, to prevent it next year, the solution might be as simple as just raking up those leaves or maybe mowing down some grass. Find out more about the insects and what you can do to prevent their normal egg laying and growth cycle, and you can virtually eliminate that pest from your garden. Prevention does take more of a long-term approach, but remember, IPM is a long-term method for pest management. If you've got the pests now and they've reached your threshold for action, now you start thinking about controls. And there's a couple different types of controls when you manage your pests. There's biological controls, there's cultural controls, there's mechanical and physical controls, and then there's chemical controls. My peonies right here are very close to flowering. And these flower buds right now are the weakest part of the plant. Well, they've been attacked by aphids. This is where biological control comes in. Because if you look closer at each of these flower buds, you'll see that they're covered with ladybugs. I didn't do anything. This is nature at play. The ladybugs show up, they've got food to eat, and they're eating the aphids that are on my peony flower buds. You can buy bags of ladybugs and many other beneficial insects, but I usually don't recommend that. Instead, I suggest paying attention, observing, and then learning about the beneficial insects and what attracts them to your garden. And then once they're in your garden, what keeps them in your garden? Just like cleaning up an old layer of leaves might be enough to break the cycle for a bad bug, you might be able to actually create a habitat and encourage the cycle for a good bug. Attract the beneficial insects and they'll take care of a lot of that biological control of these pests. There are many, many insects, wasps for instance, predatory wasps that will attack insects as small as an aphid. The wasps are very small themselves. Well, if you learn about those type of insects, eventually you'll be able to sit back and the biological control might be enough to take care of those pests. The cultural control is effectively how you garden. And I touched on this earlier. It's how you water. It's recognizing 
if you just leave a bunch of trash, old leaves, things that are just lying around the garden for no purpose, those could be breeding grounds for pests. If you have fruit trees and you just let the fruit drop and stay on the ground, well, that rotting fruit attracts a whole bunch of bad bugs. There are also certain type of plants that attract the bad bugs, just like there are plants that attract the good bugs. So if you're trying to grow a particular type of tree or plant within your garden, it might be helpful to learn about the insects that are causing damage because some of them will actually lay their eggs and grow on a different type of plant. And then in their life cycle, they'll attack the plant that you're trying to protect. There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of knowledge to be gained. But this is how you can affect your pests long term, by modifying your cultural practices to encourage the good and try to deter the bad. The mechanical and the physical controls are the ones that I do most often. They're more of a short term fix when you see a pest or see the damage for the pest. And the mechanical control is basically getting in there and killing the bug, pulling it off, blowing it off with water, taking some type of action mechanically. As I looked closer at these small leaves, I noticed it was flea beetles that were causing these holes. Well, there's one right there. Now it's not there anymore. I look around, find another leaf. There's another one. So if you're okay with just pulling off an insect and squeezing it between your fingers, that's a very effective mechanical control. You can also try physical controls. For the insects to damage your plants, they've got to make it to the plant. Well, particularly when the seedlings are young, a very effective physical control is to put hoops in a bed and then cover those hoops with row cover. The row cover will allow air in, it'll allow light, it'll allow water, but it won't allow the insects. So you've identified the insect, you've identified the damage, do what you can to get rid of the insect or to put some barrier around the plants so the insects can't even get to them in the first place. My fruit trees are still pretty young, so they're easy to manage at this point. But as trees get bigger, they become more difficult when it comes to controlling the pests. If I have a specific pest attacking one of my trees, most of the time I can find a trap that is suitable for that insect. It might be pheromone based, it might be a sticky color sheet, but there's a lot of traps out there, a mechanical method for taking care of that pest and either killing it outright or trapping it so I can take care of killing it. Think about the animal pests as well. A lot of them like these young trees. Well, I can throw bird netting over as a physical control to keep deer and other animals from nibbling on these leaves and branches. I can also throw bird netting over the trees if I keep them small so that birds don't eat the fruit. Think about those type of controls. Long term, as you're growing these plants, you can greatly reduce your pest problem. The last control is chemical control, and this is the use of pesticides. Now, it should be considered a last resort method. However, too many people decide that this is what they're going to do first. Well, this is where the trouble comes in. If you just try a shotgun approach where you're going to apply a pesticide because you've got a pest, it might not be the right kind of pesticide for that pest. There are some chemicals that work better on one type of insect and won't work at all on another. This is why you've got to follow this process where you identify the insect, determine if it's a problem at all, at what point you're going to have a threshold that you cross to take action. You can try some of these other control methods and then you can get to the chemicals. If you choose a pesticide, try to get the sharpshooter approach where you're going to target that pest specifically and try to make it as environmentally friendly as possible. So it's not something that's going to harm the animals in your landscape or not going to harm you and your family if you should happen to touch the chemical that's on the plant. 
This does take more research than a lot of people think. You really do need to find out what poison is appropriate for which insect, or else you could be causing some terrible damage to yourself, to your animals, and to the entire ecosystem. Remember that IPM is a long-term pest management process, and the next step is to assess the effectiveness of your pest management. After you've taken these previous steps to deal with your pests, assess the effectiveness of those actions. Did they work or not? And then write it down. Keep track in a garden journal of what you did and whether it worked or not, so that if the pest ever appears again, you know what to do. Or better, you note that the pest never returns, and you can attribute that to one of these specific processes along the way. That's very helpful information to share with other gardeners, and especially for you to repeat in your garden. I wish I could give you a silver bullet to take action, deal with a pest, and everything is solved, but it doesn't work that way. What I can do is give you a suit of armor for your garden. If you follow these practices, you can get to the point where your garden is effectively impervious to attack from insects because you're taking advantage of the biological controls and the physical controls and even the mechanical controls. At the Galileo Garden, we had, after about four years, almost no pest problems. Now, when we did, we'd get out there and pluck them off. But for the most part, primarily the biological controls took over and we could just relax, let the plants grow, and enjoy the harvest. And we had 75 different beds and a greenhouse, and it was very little effort to deal with the pests. Now, this is an entire system, and I encourage trying a little bit of this, a little bit of that. There, again, is no silver bullet where one of these things will be best. But once you've identified the insect and followed the process, Eventually, long term, you should have great success. If you'd like to continue your journey and want to be a better gardener, well, consider watching one of these videos. They should help. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>